Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. I hope that you are hearing me well. Um, welcome to our webinar entitled Middle Welsh Services for Secure Hyperconnected City Data. So this webinar was organized in the scope of the MSEC project, which is a EU Japan collaborative project that stands for multi-layered security technologies for hyper-connected smart cities. But before we start, just some technical recommendations regarding this webinar. So make sure that you have your microphone and video turned off. Rename yourself to first, last name and the entity that you represent, which will be easier for us to identify you during Q&A. There will be a specific slot dedicated to Q&A. So if you want to ask a question, you just need to raise your hand using the raise hand button uh, that we have here in our Zoom uh, webinar, like you see there in the picture on the right uh, bottom uh, corner of your screen. So uh, please do not uh, turn on your microphone. Uh, and do not use the chat to ask questions, so you raise your hand uh, and then I will go through the raised hands and ask you to, to ask your question uh, to our speakers. So uh, a brief overview of our agenda for this webinar. I will start with a brief presentation of what the MSEC project is and what we are aiming for. Then our speakers will provide a more comprehensive overview of one of the layers of uh, what we call DM, uh, DMSEC solution, which is the middleware layer. Uh, what it is, its role uh, in the overall architecture of the DMSEC solution and its application in a smart city context. We would like to end this webinar by also showing you a demo, uh, a video recording, of the research that our experts have been conducting for the past two years in the scope of this project and also have a debate uh, on the work that still lies ahead regarding this solution and how to tackle cybersecurity challenges in smart cities. And finally, we want to have your feedback on what was presented, if you have faced or are facing similar challenges and uh, your contributions to this discussion on how we can make our cities more data secure. But first, um, I want just to break the ice, let's say, uh, and get to know you, uh, our participants in this webinar. So I will just pose uh, three questions, three pools, um, regarding the entity you represent, if you already know our uh, MSEC project, if you had any previous contact, and what are your expectations for this webinar, just to get to know you a little bit more. So I will launch the first pool. So this should be appearing in your screen and you can vote. So what we want is to, is to understand if you come from a more general background, which includes industries and SMEs, or for a more academic context, uh, if you are from any regulation bodies related with, with data, data security, for instance, from the community, like regions, cities uh, interested uh, in, in data security issues, or from a more policymaking background. Okay, so the majority of you have voted. I will now close this pool and show you the results. So it seems that the majority of you actually comes from the industry, are a startup or an SME. Hopefully uh, you are here today also to uh, uh, give us your feedback uh, on what you think about the MSEC solution but also if you are facing similar challenges, like the ones that our researchers will uh, present. But you seem to also be coming from the academic uh, background and also from our community. So possibly cities or regions 
who can become or are becoming uh, smart cities or smart regions. So welcome you all. Then I will launch our second pool. This is a very short question just to know if you already knew about MSEC. So have you uh, taken part of our previous webinars? Um, do you know us from our social media? So just to know if you have already gained contact uh, with us uh, in any means possible. I will now close the pool and share the results with you. So apparently no, the majority of you do not know MSEC. So uh, thank you for being a part of this webinar. And I hope that with this webinar, you are able to get uh, in touch with MSEC and learn a little bit more about the techn technological solution that our researchers have been developing. And now for the final question, this is more related with your expectations for this webinar. Uh, and here you can choose multiple options. So uh, is it about learning more about MSEC, better understanding the solution, so the, the innovative solution that our researchers are conducting, uh, more about the specificity of the middleware layer, which is one of the layers of this solution, or if you are eager to get in touch with our researchers uh, and perhaps explore possible cooperation possibilities. So I can see some answers popping up. Let's just wait a few more seconds. And now I will close the pool and share the results with you. So apparently you are uh, eager to learn more about the MSEC and the MSEC solution, which is great, uh, but also want to know a little bit more about our middleware layer of for this solution. So I do hope that the, with this webinar, uh, you will be able to meet your expectations. Okay, so now moving, moving forward to uh, what the MSEC project is and what are we aiming for. So just a brief overview before uh, giving the floor to our speakers. So the MSEC project is an EU-Japan collaborative project, like, like I've stated before, that brings together strong partners from both sides. So from the industry and also from the academia. These partners have been chosen particularly for their knowledge and expertise on data security and smart city platforms. Of course, we also have uh, cities uh, involved, such as the city of Santander in Spain and the city of Fujisawa in Japan. The main goal of the MSEC project is to understand uh, develop and research a multi-layered security technology, what we call the MSEC solution. And this solution aims at ensuring hyper, uh, in hyper-connected smart cities, the, it's aimed at ensuring that uh, cybersecurity issues are tackled in hyper-connected smart cities. Ultimately, MSEC researchers are trying to develop an innovative solution, so a technological innovative solution upon which stakeholders can build innovative smart city applications while enabling the creation of liquid markets with profitable business models for stakeholders. So the idea is that during three years of this project, our researchers research and develop this MSEC solution that aims at tackling cybersecurity issues in cities that are obviously very hyper-connected. And here we have the, the two cities that uh, are working with us, like I said before, so Santander in Spain and also Fujisawa in Japan. And it's in the cities that we will pilot the solution uh, and see how are the major challenges and how 
can this solution be implemented in other cities all around the world. So the M6 mission, I would say, is to lay the foundation for the adoption and creation of new IoT security standards and mechanisms. Namely, that these are compatible either in the EU and also in Japan. It also is about creating a decentralized IoT ecosystem and validate its visibility and sustainability. And it's also about defining and implementing a marketplace around the MSEC solution. So in the end of this project, uh, our researchers are now developing and thinking about this marketplace. And in the end of this project, we will be able to put in the market this novel marketplace around the MSEC solution. In this marketplace, smart objects can exchange information, energy and services through the use of virtual currencies, allowing real-time matching of supply and demand, and enable the creation of liquid markets with profitable business models for IoT stakeholders. But how will our researchers implement and test the MSEC solution? So in the scope of the project, we will be applying it into five different use cases. These use cases relate with diverse areas of a smart city life and go from improving the well-being of the elderly population to monitoring rubbish collection to create playable city games uh, such as uh, promote touristic attractions. So, and this will be implemented in the two cities of Santander and Fujisawa. Of course, that we are uh, always eager to cooperate with other cities as well um, to replicate the MSEC solution and the MSEC marketplace in those cities. All these areas of our life, they use and they exchange data. Uh, and our MSEC researchers, they do believe that the solution that they are developing can in fact improve data exchange security and privacy in all of them. So moving on to what actually brings us here today, we have our four speakers that will um, tell us a little bit more about not only the MSEC solution, but the middleware layer, which is one of the layers of this uh, solution and how it can benefit uh, our lives in a smart city context. Uh, so thank you so much for the four of you for being here today. And um, we have with us uh, Levent Gurgen from Kent U, also Antonis Litke and George from ICCS in Greece. And also joining us is Jim Nakasawa from the Keio University. So thank you so much for, for joining us. I think that our participants can now see, see you in your video. And I will give the floor to Antonis uh, to start this very interesting webinar on the middleware layer. Thank you very much, Nadine. Uh, my name is Antonis Litke. I come from the uh, Institute of uh, Computer Communication Systems of the National Tec Technical University of Athens. Uh, we are a partner in this very interesting uh, project, MSEC. And I would like to thank you also for attending this uh, webinar event. Uh, and uh, I hope that you find it very um, interesting and facilitating perhaps a future collaboration uh, with uh, um, selected other researchers in this webinar. <clears throat> so uh, going directly uh, on the middleware overview, um, the MSEC middleware is actually a um, one moment, yes, it has been lost. Oh. <laughs> Um, it's actually, we are going to have an overview of the different assets that uh, comprise the MSEC middleware, uh, namely the Sensing Act, uh, which is an urban data platform, the Secure Sox Fire, uh, coming from the Keio University in uh, Japan. Uh, we have, of course, 
the blockchain part of the project, which is an, uh, another asset that is based on uh, the Quorum blockchain, which is an Ethereum-like blockchain, different smart contracts that have been written in Solidity, uh, along with uh, special features, uh, especially for web application uh, APIs, and uh, the separation on how we, uh, let's say, tackle the on-chain and off-chain data handling with uh, uh, IPFS, with an interplanetary file system. Uh, on top of that, since uh, the, the MSEC project has, uh, let's say, the security as a main focus, uh, we uh, are implementing a Know Your Customer mechanism, which is part of a blockchain framework that we have built so that we increase the different features that have to do with privacy and uh, um, identity management within the project. Now, how are all these related to, to MSEC? It's uh, not only that we try to, to handle uh, an individual middleware layer approach that uh, has to be connected with the blockchain framework, but it's also, as Nadine said, to support different use cases. To, to reveal, let's say, the added value that comes from all this uh, mixture of technologies. So we need a permission blockchain for privacy at the end, and we need a middleware service that allows us to uh, interact with various edge components as uh, they are needed for facilitating the specific use cases. The main achievements of the uh, MSEC project related uh, uh, middleware, we have already elicited different requirements that uh, are not only necessary for the project, but uh, set for defining this integration between the middleware uh, services, the Internet of Things uh, framework, and uh, uh, of course the blockchain. To, um, to define this overall architecture, implement the prototypes that are necessary for demonstrating the usability of these technologies and of course define uh, an overall plan to integrate the MSAC core system components and uh, enable a continuous integration because after, after all we need at the end of the project to have a living system that uh, is not only going to pilot it in the specific use cases, but also enable the further extension, future extension of new services, new technologies that can be integrated over there. So, as far as it concerns um, the, the architectural approach, we have we have a, a layered approach for the overall uh, MSEC architecture, but here, and also the purpose of this uh, webinar, as you can see, is to uh, focus namely on the different um, middleware related services that have to do with uh, the secure city data access and uh, the integration with uh, the public that uh, is being applied for facilitating the use cases and additional services of the mechanisms like for instance the trust and reputation model engine and all this KYC the know your customer uh, services that are implemented so here is where we're going to, to focus our webinar today and this is uh, why we have structured this in, in such a way so that you can have a, a brief overview of sensing act of secure socks fire as middleware platforms along with the quorum blockchain and additional services and mechanisms that we have created. So going into more detail in all those um, services, uh, I will hand uh, over now to my colleague, um, Levent Gürgen, who is going to uh, provide some uh, more information on the approach of the Sensing Act middleware platform. Yes, hello, thanks, thanks Anthony. Okay, so yeah, I will be presenting you, I think I have, I will be able to control from my mm -hmm. PC, right? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. So yeah, what is the smart cellular? Actually, what we have today in the cities, um, yeah, okay. In the cities, uh, we have, you know, um, 
many types of um, data sources we may have. We may have social networks, we may have mobile applications, uh, crowdsourcing type of applications, we have World Wide Web, we have legacy devices, and in particular, an increasingly uh, increasing number of IoT devices. So all of those are, let's say, the senses of the city. And uh, what we need indeed is this, the brain of the city where we will be processing that data, extracting high level knowledge and planning and uh, reacting to the changing, uh, dynamically changing context in the city. At the end, this is for serving to the citizens. This, the citizen is in the center of all the preoccupations. So we will be <clears throat> building applications from different domains like energy, healthcare, retail, Etc. So the middle layer level indeed um, remains in this middle layer actually, and uh, which in which we are now focusing in this uh, presentation. So uh, yeah, uh, let me go back. Okay, yes. Okay, so we are. Uh, we have built a middleware layer indeed for smart cities, which um, actually, as you know, there is currently a current uh, a, a large number of IoT protocols, IoT um, or uh, legacy uh, data platforms, and it is a quite heterogeneous environment. And what we have built is indeed this uh, middleware layer, which is called SenseNet platform. Um, to which unifies all of these heterogeneous data sources um, and provides high level APIs to access in real time or historically to all of these um, heterogeneous data in a unified way. And we can access to that data using also different types of protocols, RESTful APIs, or different standards. And on top of that, we are also providing uh, a tool that allows quickly. Uh, building applications, exploiting that data and action action sources. Um, we have in the, let's say, the added value that we bring uh, in DEMSEC project and generally when we, uh, when we use this platform in deployments, that we have this modular environment. It means that tomorrow if we want to support an additional uh, protocol, an additional data platform, all we need to do is indeed to build these adapters and plug in into the platform, which allows us, uh, even without restarting the executing platform, to provide the compatibility with uh, any new uh, standard. It's both in the southbound level and also in the northbound level to access uh, to the data in, in runtime. We can also have uh, um, build in a modular way applications exploiting that data and we can uh, deploy that application on the on the platform and manage its life cycle um, stop it uh, start to install and install it in in runtime in a very dynamic way and this dynamicity actually it is coming with our service oriented approach so in which we have all these sensing and actuating devices which uh, represent actually services so a temperature service typically a temperature sensor provides temperature services presence detector um, sensor provides a service that detects people or an object in an environment and etc so all of these um, devices for us are service providers and it can be sensor data or also the actuators for sure and at the end uh, building an application uh, becomes a composition of those uh, services and these services can be um, it can be deployed in a given platform or a gateway, but it can be also distributed in several gateways, for instance, according to a geogra geographical uh, distribution. And some part of those uh, services, which may require some um, resources, more important resources, can also be uh, running in the cloud. So we have this edge cloud continuum where we, in a transparent way for the developers, for the applications, we can distribute all these uh, services and compose services to, in order to build applications exploiting those uh, those services. So which brings us a very reusable, 
and um, distributed architecture so that we can one temperature sensor or presence detector service uh, sensor can be used at a time uh, security application also a kind of multimedia follow me application or any type of home automation application um, which is indeed um, uh, saves a lot of effort of application development and for the for the uh, deployers out of money as well um the second yeah so so what we are um actually using sensinac indeed to provide this interoperability layer in in sensinac so that for for this for the application developers, uh, a device providing a parking space information or a, a garbage truck providing the environmental information to the system is being done exactly the same way so that for the applications, they just need to do to make this composition among uh, different, um, different, uh, um, uh, different data sources. Um, so we are exploiting this in, as mentioned earlier, uh, there are a couple of use cases in the project, um, like elderly care and, and um, garbage truck monitoring and smart mobility. So it allows us in an easy way to build these horizontal uh, applications using this um, uh, vertical application, sorry, using this vertical, vertical approach. I think I'm done with this Sensinet. Um, yeah, so these are the kind of the, the screenshots from different application applications that we are using uh, by by using the the Sensinet, like uh, smart parking sensors, um, devices that are deployed in the in the home environments for monitoring aging people to help them uh, gain autonomy and uh, trigger alerts when there are some dangerous situation uh, detected and mobile sensing platform as mentioned earlier that allows us monitoring in the city in real time the data coming from the garbage trucks and also having this participatory sensing that allows that gives the power to the citizens to use mobile applications and to inform uh, the the other users about some interesting events in the city Okay, so this is in a nutshell our our platform, and maybe I can now give the floor to my colleague Jean to describe also the other secured Soxfire platform. Yes, um, I'm Jin Nakazawa from Keio University. Um, several times, Levin said Fujisawa, and also Antonis also said so, and I am now. Uh, <laughs> talking in Fujisawa city in, in Japan. And um, in here, um, in Keio University, we have been developing so-called SOX Fire. Uh, SOX stands for, not, not your SOX for your uh, foot, but uh, SOX is sensor over XMPP, S-O-X, in short, SOX. There are a number of communication protocols that can be used for sensor data delivery from uh, the edge side to the applications and users side. And among them is XMPP. It was initially um, developed for uh, communication of um, um, chat-based system like Twitter. But uh, since it can deliver kind of small amounts, short messages to uh, so many users, it is kind of helpful um, that that capability is helpful for delivery of uh, sensor data that can be uh, generated by so many uh, sensors or, you know, people and so on. So, uh, SOXFIRE, which exists in the middle of this figure, is a publish subscribe based pub sub based system which can um, handle a large scale ILT data stream. Not uh, in, instead of focusing on uh, the stored data sets, we have been focusing on how we can deliver so many data streams. And you can easily assume that in the ILT era, there are a huge number of uh, sensors, so-called sensors. We, I, I will uh, talk about 
them later in, on this slide. And also at the same time, there are a number of users on the other side. And in fact, even if there are sensors generating so many data streams, it is not necessarily, uh, the, the, all of them are not necessarily be consumed by the users. Uh, some of the data streams are very important for some users, but some others are um, quite useless. Therefore, we have to have, um, we have to make them, namely sensors and users or applications be independent totally. Otherwise, um, such a large scale sensor data communication cannot happen without um, um, trouble. Therefore, PubSub based system is quite useful for such a large scale sensor data uh, communication. So on the, uh, this, this side, uh, on the data collection side in KO and also uh, some, some folks um, in, in MSEC project, we have a lot of diff uh, yeah, so many different types of sensors. Um, Levent, he said garbage collection trucks generate data. And uh, many of you should thought why and <laughs> how a garbage, well, just, they are just a garbage collection trucks. But uh, yeah, in, in Kale, we mm, have been trying to cover all the city, whole city, um, in, in for, for generation uh, to know the environmental data citywide. And well, there are a few, uh, options to, to do that. One of them is to put so many sensors all, all over the city, but it, it, it costs a lot. So we have asked, we asked to uh, the city officer, uh, the, the municipality office of, of Fujisawa to um, borrow, uh, to let us use the garbage collection trucks as the media. So we have put um, 10 different types of sensors uh, inside a box, packed, packed in a box, out of the, the garbage collection trucks, uh, 70 of them. And then every day, those trucks are operated all over the city, collecting garbage and the data simultaneously. And the sensor data stream generated by them are um, 100 hertz, which means within one second, uh, 7,000 or 70 times 100, 7,000 um, sensor data packets are generated to the Soxfire uh, middleware. And in addition to that, in Fujisawa, not only uh, the physical sensor, Human eyes, human ears, they are quite useful to, to, to collect uh, real world information. Sometimes sensors or camera, microphone cannot decide whether uh, some, some phenomena is important for humans or not. For example, um, can a camera determine, hey, this is um, uh, graffiti? Probably not. Can a computer decide this sound is a noise or not? No. Computers can um, uh, can sense the vol the amount of volumes, or um, computers can can take a picture of uh, an, an image. But inside it, the information inside them are um, very much dependent on human decision. So um, here uh, we use people as a sensor and uh, such a, a type of sensing is so-called part participatory human sensing. And though we have also um, developed a system that with which you can put some sort of virtual sensor on web pages where um, so many data are already put. So using all of these different types of, types of sensors, currently we have over thousands of sensor data streams um, 
coming into Soxfire middleware um, in real time. And then we have a large amount of applications that, that consume um, some of those sensor data streams. Now, um, MSEC project, this project is about security, IoT security. What is the security issue inside uh, such a middleware system? That is, in, in my um, project, in, in my case, that is end-to-end -end security, to keep end-to-end -end security. Um, yeah, as you know, uh, one single sensor data packet uh, is transmitted and forwarded uh, hop by hop. In this case, from, for example, a uh, garbage collection truck, a data packet is first transmitted over um, cell phone network and in the internet. And from there, um, through some, some routers and switches to finally to the applications running inside a smartphone or your PC. Then, um, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to, to encrypt the data inside the edge side. However, once this packet is reaches to a cloud server, for example, can we decrypt it? The cloud server may be um, attacked by a malicious guy. Therefore, I'd, ideally speaking, once the packet is um, encrypted at the edge side, this packet should never be decrypted on the way to the, the application side. So this is what we call end-to-end -end security. And um, yeah, so, so secure Soxfire is our solution to that. So uh, the detailed things about that is not the focus of today's webinar, so I skip explaining that. But um, yeah, that is a huge, one of the huge issues addressed by the MSEC project. So using the sensor data streams from um, the, the secure Soxfire, the remaining talk by Antones and George um, are kind of, um, yeah, so, so data from these middleware system can be uh, sold to people via uh, blockchain based marketplace. Yes. So uh, please continue, Antonis. Thank you very much, uh, uh, both uh, Levent and Jean. So, by continuing now our presentation, Uh, we will uh, proceed with the approach we follow on the blockchain part of the middleware we, we have and uh, see then how it is integrated with uh, those other middleware platforms uh, already described by uh, Levent and Jean. So in MSEC, we, um, we are following the, let's say, a blockchain approach which is based on Ethereum, which is an open source decentralized uh, blockchain platform, as most of you are aware of it. And uh, uh, in overall, it enables us to uh, consider uh, the blockchain as a, a global uh, uh, computing resource where we can deploy smart contracts, uh, instances of computer programs we, we put there, and uh, uh, let them be enabled in specific conditions that are met. And uh, uh, through this, uh, we can, uh, uh, let's say, program uh, some intelligence, some things that would like to take place when specific instances of the middleware are taking place. Um, ways to connect to Ethereum that we, we followed, of course, through the application programming interface and Web3.js. Uh, there are some alternatives someone can follow not only of course uh, the main ethereum network which uh, there you have to uh, consider uh, real ethereum as a coin which is uh, uh, expensive given also the the recent volatility but additional other test networks uh, that are available also on a local network uh, with uh, specific test remote procedure calls on a local host and this was let's say the main framework through which we initially experimented. Uh, as said 
for the reasons of testing and of course validating different use cases in MSEC, we have developed the MSEC token, which is an ERC20 um, token uh, created based on this standard, which um, of course is implemented in Solidity programming language and uh, allows us to uh, implement different transaction modes that would uh, uh, definitely be relevant for the use cases in where we would like to exchange not only information but also value between the different participants of <clears throat> the um, of the applications that are developed there to that end we have created all the necessary uh, methods that uh, enable the management of the specific uh, token the msec token and uh, that have to do, of course, with the supply and the balance of the owner, the relevant, uh, uh, let's say, transfer mechanisms, approvals, and also uh, all those uh, features that would enable the creation of this token as a way to share value between the entities. And we're going to see later on how uh, this is related to the particular use cases that we have in, um, in MSEC. Given that, as said, because Ethereum had some limitations in terms of it's, it's, a, it's a public blockchain and if you would like to, to experiment in uh, real deployments, there would be the need for having a real Ether as a, um, as a value shared over there. We have experimented with Quorum blockchain, which is a permission version of Ethereum, which allows certified members to build and run the decentralized application. It's an open source blockchain platform. Uh, giving also the ability for some smart contract privacy and as we're going to see it was also a very important features, feature that we um, experimented with because uh, as already said security and privacy are building um, let's say cornerstones of the MSEC project and um, given that it uh, enables also a multiple voting based consensus mechanism which is much more efficient in terms of when we're talking about permission blockchains and avoiding uh, energy consuming alternative for instance proof of work specific mechanisms for consensus and as far as it concerns the real the actual deployment we, uh, let's say, uh, consider Alastria, which is a public permissioned network, uh, deploying not only Quorum, of course, other implementation of blockchains, uh, but in this case, as it is a, a non-profit association uh, operating in Spain, and uh, would give us the opportunity to experiment on one side with real Quorum, if you prefer, Ethereum-based blockchain, plus on a, a real deployment, industrial scale deployment, so that we can leverage the different features that are important and can be, uh, let's say, coupled as features between these approaches. That is something which, of course, is very appealing for uh, MSENC and uh, enabled us to see how our solution, what we deliver, can uh, actually be further replicated in real industrial developments. And trying to give also a glue with the different applications that are built on top of all those middleware, we are considering also the IoT marketplace, which is actually a decentralized application based on blockchain and other middleware services for sharing these Internet of Things sensor data. We already uh, somehow partially described. It's an implementation on a node rate, which is a workflow um, mechanism to program and wire together different services in, uh, provided uh, by uh, edge computing resources or cloud computing resources. And at the same time, the different smart contracts as a programming logic that can uh, be part of the middleware related services so that we have not only uh, all those digital currencies that are necessary for sharing the value between the participating entities in all this big spectrum of participants, but also um, provide the necessary uh, smart contracts for registering sensors, or, uh, for instance, uh, recording transactions between IoT devices, um, handle different data streams that come from smart cities and data sources and all those 
can be uh, programmed and orchestrated to the specific uh, set of tools we have already uh, deployed. And this is something which, of course, is going to be um, described a little bit later on as well, as it is a very important aspect. So given that the coupling of an Alastria uh, industry blockchain, which uh, in common, aggregates features that have to do with permissioned blockchain, the quorum per permission blockchain, blockchain, however, replicable on a large scale, on industrial scale, with uh, participants on those uh, on this blockchain that uh, are running hundreds of others decentralized application in something which gave us an opportunity to define how those middleware services can be part of an overall msec platform and at the same time be part of this alastria blockchain network which was uh, of course a, a very important challenge that we had to to, to tackle so we are uh, maintaining uh, MSEC Alastria node, uh, which um, actually, as I said, has already uh, deployed a set of different smart contracts that have to do, for instance, with the MSEC uh, uh, token uh, on uh, how uh, we configure different other services that are part of the IoT marketplace and how we uh, can consider also uh, wallets for those MSEC tokens so that we enable the different participating entities share the value that we said. This is a, a, an important spectrum of different um, application level services and middleware layer services that we have implemented as part of this project. Just to give some example of the different challenges that are there for bringing together the middleware and IoT part integration as we need to, to have, for instance, the exchange of data and value over uh, the MSEC blockchain between the application level um, service consumer, and service producers through the middleware, those challenges had to do also with, uh, as you understand, complex uh, smart contract functionalities, which would need to exploit not only the quorum uh, blockchain uh, features, but also to rely on different privacy and security mechanisms. So one um, feature that we, uh, as already said, definitely consider is to secure also anonymity. And this is something that, which is going to be uh, more visible on the uh, different GDPR aspects that we are going to present shortly as part of the uh, use cases. So this IoT marketplace should be a decentralized application based on the MSEC blockchain part, blockchain framework that we have already uh, denoted, and should allow the secure exchange of data provided by the smart city sensors and create also the marketplace, the way where different entities can not only exchange those IoT sensor data, but also buy them or sell them. This is where the marketplace comes in. And as such, individual blockchain middleware services that are being built on quorum blockchain that have to do with the know your customer an important factor that uh, as you all know uh, influences the the functionality of any uh, let's say application that has to run over blockchain exchanging value uh, it is important although as already uh, uh, noted uh, we do not use real value in this case it's a research project so the msec token it cannot be bought anywhere else it's a test uh, token but as you can understand it's something which uh, um, definitely uh, allows us to to experiment with important aspect uh, so that uh, as you already uh, also my colleague jean said uh, the sox fire that was presented by him is something that we had to integrate with uh, and uh, the SOX fire has to be integrated in the blockchain because all those uh, public subscribe mechanisms on sensors that are being provided uh, in for the Sava use case need somehow to be um, handled in such a way that can be transacted on the quorum blockchain that we we have and on, not only that can be part also of the different uh, value exchange mechanisms to, to buy and sell those specific data. So, um, dedicated smart contracts have to take uh, 
let's say, to be implemented so that it would allow the registration of the sensors, not only on the SOX fire part, but also on uh, the, um, uh, the quorum blockchain, the MSEC blockchain, services and functionalities that have to do with the purchase of and the exchange of data, and not only that, visualization things, because of course, the midpoint part is there to provide the, this glue between the, the different services, but at the end, it should deliver things to the application level so that we uh, can have visual representation of the different data that are there. So the specific um, integration, as you can see, took place in such a way that uh, features could be, uh, could be mapped between the SOX Fire platform and the IoT marketplace. And an important other aspect that uh, was also briefly mentioned had to do with additional middleware services like, for instance, the Know Your Customer part. There, the requirement was to enrich with privacy and security features and apply KYC, Know Your Customer processes that, as well know, are now mandatory uh, based also on different regulations and um, uh, recommendations by the European Commission so that everybody who is going to share value over a blockchain, there should be a way to be identified so that uh, there is, any, there is uh, let's say, the application of anti-money laundering um, principles and uh, processes. So the challenge there is, I mean, how can you provide middleware service which is run somewhere near the blockchain and allows you to implement those processes in, in, a, in a way which is transparent to the users, but at the same time usable for all the different features that we would like to have here as, um, as functionalities. And here you can see uh, briefly uh, the approach that we followed where <clears throat> there is an approval process in uh, the particular case, the user registers to the system, registers to the uh, overall MSEC system, and there are dedicated middleware services that run on the following mode where uh, there should be an approval, there should be um, identification of any expiring date for having this user validated to be a, a user of the different services. And at the same time, let the user be transact, although validated in an anonymous way with the, um, with the specific service. And here with more detail, we can see that for instance, those know your customer uh, process, um, there is an intuitive way for someone to get access to the particular uh, blockchain. When he is not registered, then something is going to be asked for him to uh, to, so that he, he gets validated and you can see it here, the, the second part where uh, individual, uh, for the specific individual documents are going to be requested so that he is validated. And once he uploads the specific uh, documentation, there are external processes that will allow uh, approvers to have access to the specific data in a decentralized way. Those data are not a part of the blockchain. They are part of an IPFS, an external file system, which of course can be, is decentralized and uh, um, can facilitate uh, multiple decentralized approaches so that they can scale over the different uh, um, deployments that are going to be there. And then those data, like for instance, the duration of the user account before expiration. So for how long this user is going to be um, validated to use services uh, of MSEC, those information is stored in smart contract, deployed on Quorum blockchain that is already available. And then there, any additional service that relies on those approval sets uh, is actually consulting our blockchain to see whether the user, the specific user is, is in, entitled to use the specific service. Um, so this KYC expiry date um, 
is uh, uh, also an important feature that uh, gives, let's say, a, how to say, real-time conditions for the usage of the specific uh, blockchain. And as already said, the interplanetary file system, which allows us to have a fully decentralized application to, uh, to be able also to uh, share not only data that come from sensors, but also additional data, because though, uh, this uh, IPFS can actually work as a large facility for uh, exchanging large scale data and uh, be handled with a decentralized approach uh, and be also the counterpart of the off-chain uh, additional um, uh, data sources. It's uh, something which um, uh, complements the whole picture of this uh, approach we have followed for the specific uh, uh, main components of MSEC. Different uh, API methods that have been developed as a way to, um, to connect to the middleware. Uh, perhaps I should not go into detail so that we, uh, we have some time for the demo and the, um, and the question and answers. And here you can see also, besides the different ways to connect to the middleware through the API features that have to do, as you can see here with the node red, uh, look and feel on wiring in a specific workflows, the different services we have developed, it's part of the programmability of the whole uh, service uh, suite, define the different workflows to deliver uh, the results of this uh, computation we would like to have. And of course, other user interfaces, and I will not go into detail because also George in his last uh, presentation is going to uh, provide also this um, Sorry. So, very briefly, because we discussed about the middleware approach, uh, but uh, to some of you who are not perhaps familiar with uh, the project in its whole, in entire scale, just to give also, okay, we've seen features of the middleware, but what kind of application uh, this middleware supports? How this is uh, related to the different use cases that can be supported by what we have already presented. Of course, we presented the middleware uh, functionalities. Now we try to, to show how the big picture looks like. So as we briefly described uh, in the beginning of this webinar, then, Different use cases that are presented and uh, um, are being uh, used in, uh, in MSEC have to do, uh, for instance, with the use case one has to do with the mobility. It's uh, taking place in uh, um, Smart Park in Santander, where there are different uh, methods to, um, and of course, tools that will enable the smart mobility, smart mobility of the citizens which uh, uh, is going to be based, of course, not only on mobile devices that are going to be used, but also on dedicated services and dedicated devices as part of an Internet of Things security part. There, the use case, um, of course, does not require a lot of personal data, so, but however, data security and integrity is a must, as you understand, because we have to do with citizens and any uh, such interaction on how, for instance, to guide someone with um, with a nice and intuitive way. So besides, let's say, forgetting the specific uh, user experience part, different facilities that have to do with getting information, sending information to uh, citizens. Uh, there are, of course, different features that are of paramount importance and have to be addressed. And not to forget, of course, the GDPR compliance, which is part of every uh, MSEC use case and has to do uh, with how we preserve all those regulations that um, are mandatory for the overall data protection, those data that are being sent or consumed by the end users. Another uh, use case. Uh, one moment, please. The home monitoring security system, especially for the aging people, 
uh, it is another very important use case which actually shows uh, this decentralized approach and how we can allow at one side the teleassistance of uh, the aging population residing in their homes or independent living but at the same time in order to improve this quality of life how you can use data that are being captured that are being sent by uh, smart homes by um, home monitoring uh, devices and applications and as you can see this use case invo involves uh, the processing of sensitive data such as, as the activity for instance that takes place in a specific um, home of um, for instance, an aging person. And that the security and integrity in this case is, uh, uh, again, of paramount importance. So consider how you can capture this data as part of the application and then feed it through the different mechanisms that are necessary and how do you can feed it in the different middleware services that are necessary so that you can facilitate through the middleware layer approach all those um, particular features of the application. GDPR, as you can understand here, is again uh, very important and it is part of uh, uh, a broader context has to do especially for the sensitive personal data that are being used in the specific use case. The secure and uh, trustworthy mobile sensing uh, platform. Here it is uh, more or less what uh, Jean described earlier on about this Fujisawa use case where by using the garbage collector uh, trucks, there are uh, concurrently additional features that are being measured by edge computing principles, by sensors that are being placed on those trucks. And how you can see here, there is also an additional challenge because uh, environmental monitoring per se is not um, sensitive uh, as far as it concerns the personal data or sensitive data. But uh, as you can imagine, there are different video streams that are being captured and by applying those edge computing principles and trying to preserve features on the edge and how you can integrate on one side the edge computing principle with the SOX fire approach and then all this with a, a additional features like middleware services like blockchain uh, is again a challenge which as you understand requires a lot of attention as far as it concerns how you can handle those data to provide something meaningful something sustainable for um, the, the use case or other similar use cases. The secure effective participatory sensing of uh, city events, which is going to take place also on Fujisawa and Santander, their uh, users and users through mobile phones act as sensors and creators of content, user generated content with um, like pictures that are being captured by the mobile devices. And there you can see that there is user generated data streams, user generated um, data being uh, created. And then it is a matter of how you can uh, um, allow mechanisms that would uh, enable the sharing of those data in broader context, in broader social context, in other users. As you can understand, um, security features there are very important and features that have to do with uh, GDPR and how uh, privacy protection is going to take place is again a the basis for the, the development that we have already considered for facilitating the specific uh, use case. And we come on the application level of the marketplace because I see that there is a question and I would like to have time to discuss it also at the end. Um, how um, the marketplace, okay, we create data, we have data streams and how all this can be part of an application level marketplace where those data can be facilitated for further uh, exploitation for further exchange for further even uh, produce business models that would enable what also Nabin said a uh, begin the, the liquid market ways to to, um, to to match demand and supply in markets where s such a, an exchange of data is meaningful so there we have this uh, broader framework where we try to find different ways not only to feed data in such a context through the different middleware approaches but also how to find ways that will reveal this marketplace as something useful by the user communities to exchange data 
And last but not least, some scientific achievements and uh, uh, ongoing work, as you have already understood, different challenges are still ahead. So the project has almost one year um, also to be, uh, let's say, finished. So there is a, a lot of work to be done still, although many achievements have been uh, accomplished. But as far as it concerns the expansion of this IoT marketplace with additional features or the expansion of the different smart contracts so that we try to program new logic that can be applied on the middleware and will allow the automated execution of different mechanisms that facilitate those use cases. It's something which is ongoing. Privacy and security, it never ends, as you can understand, because we have already mechanisms, and as you can see, there are many mechanisms already developed for the privacy pre preservation, but this never ends, as long as there are data generated by the users. And there are services that are being consumed by the users. You understand that there is always a, a balance and trade-off of what has to be further monitored to uh, increase security and preserve privacy. Cryptography features, private transactions, other perhaps private channels for enabling the transaction, or uh, hiding different features that might reveal the privacy feature as long as he is using the um, different service of the platform are always part of this. And the trust and reputation features that will ensure the operators of different register sensors uh, that these data sources, these data streams are trusted, are reputable, and are validated in the specific context that we would like them to have. Uh, to that end, we are experimenting with different mechanisms that have to do with proof of location, especially when using um, mobile devices. There are specific publications that have been already uh, made. And additional blockchain-based security uh, features. And this is where we are experimenting also with some graph databases, trying to formulate uh, blockchain transactions as nodes on graphs so that we can uh, additional security mechanisms for analytics and trying to see how uh, different uh, security mechanisms can be applied. This is also um, part of our research work and you can uh, see some additional uh, features in the respective applications. So to this end, I would like to uh, to give the floor now to Levent to say a few words on this um, and a very important um, event and then proceed with the demo. Yes, thanks, Antonis. Just a few, a few words on that. Indeed, uh, MSEC and its partners are part of this international alliance, which is called Urban Technology Alliance, which has been indeed initiated with several uh, partnerships that we had in the past. Um, including cities or industrial partners or academy from different parts of the world, in particular Asia, Europe, and also a bit North America, let's say. We have cities on board like Grenoble, Taipei, Busan, Tsukuba, Santander, Busheon, Daejeon, Saitama. So all of these cities are actually um, uh, joining forces with the support from the industry in order to deploy and test smart city solutions on their field. So the objective is indeed before large scale adoption of any technology to testing uh, solutions and to validate them, uh, technically speaking, also uh, testing the business models or social acceptance. All of this um, pre-large adoption, pre-large scale deployment, um, we are building uh, this uh, structure this forum in order to give the possibility of the cities to test those solutions before a large scale uh, adoption and also giving this opportunity to the industry uh, validating their solution uh, before large scale production let's say and uh, we have also the academy to to guide the cities in particular for um, with some, let's say, natural uh, guidance to help them uh, establish this, um, this partnership. So we are organizing our um, first virtual event on December, from December 8th to 11th. 
so you have more information in, in our website so if you are interested in joining and uh, being part of the community you are for sure welcome you can also have a virtual exhibition area um, so if you have some smart city related solutions you can also expose them there it's a virtual environment it will stay there your exhibition space during one year um, and there are different possibilities there are even uh, possibilities even free of charge so please feel free to visit our website and, and discover this, this possibility We're having speakers in this event from large cities like uh, Busan, Taipei, uh, Santander will be there as well Saitama and Fujisawa cities will be there as, as well from Japan and we will have several Jap uh, Korean cities uh, will be there and some others uh, like Vancouver for instance and probably from North Africa as well so it will be a nice event so you, you are welcome to, to join us there thank you thank you very much Levent uh, so I would propose to go uh, very briefly into a demo uh, to be made by uh, George. Let me, uh, and then we, uh, because there are some questions, let's have some time to discuss them and uh, answer them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Adonis. I would like to share my screen now. So let me know, know when uh, this is feasible. So I so another user seems to be sharing the screen. Uh, can I take the control of uh, the screen sharing, please? Yes, just a moment. Thank you, Nadine. <laughs> okay, so you can now share screen, George. Thank you very much. So uh, we have uh, developed uh, different APIs and uh, user interfaces uh, in order to make the uh, middleware accessible. Uh, here uh, in this demo we show how a user is able to purchase IoT sensor data uh, coming from different uh, IoT sensors using our dedicated created cryptocurrency. So the user is able to see all the available sensors. Uh, these sensors are actually located in Keio campus in Tokyo area. And uh, he, he chooses among one of the sensors and uh, specifies uh, the details such as the timestamp uh, of the beginning and end of uh, the data uh, which he's interested to, to purchase. He can see the price and upon confirmation, uh, the purchase is completed, a new transaction is created, uh, and the new block in the blockchain is created uh, with this transaction. So he can uh, search uh, through all the recent blocks, he can find uh, the one uh, with uh, his most recent uh, purchase. We have a different UI when he can see all his purchases, and now searching for uh, for the previously one mentioned, uh, he can see the actual data. It's important here to mention that uh, the data arrived through the bridge that uh, was developed and uh, it's part of the middleware. It's the IoT marketplace, uh, Chaos Ox5 bridge, and allow us to handle uh, very big uh, volumes, uh, streams of data and uh, visualize them for the end user in a user-friendly manner. So different user interfaces were also developed in order to support the use cases. Uh, using this uh, interface, user is able to buy and sell media items. Uh, all these uh, are also based in, uh, uh, in smart contracts, in web applications. Uh, this specific page is the overview on the MSEC token. Uh, it's a Solidity smart contract. Uh, where uh, using the interface, the user is able to see all the recent transaction, uh, his here balance in MSEC tokens, and uh, is able to exchange uh, data and uh, value. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, George. So, uh, Nadine, I suppose we go now to the Q&A session. Yes. Uh, there are uh, already some uh, questions. Thank you very much. So, uh, there is a question, how does data need to be traded in a, uh, why does the data need to be traded in a marketplace? It's a feature that uh, actually is provided by um, MSEC. It's, it's not only MSEC, the pro uh, project that deals with a specific issue. As I already many say, data is going to be the, the oil of the next uh, century. In the sense that, of course, there are open data. Of course, open data initiatives are very important. But at the same time, we cannot forget that there are also a private data. MSEC as a project, of course, relies strongly on uh, open data. And this is the reason why the token that is being created is only, only a way for exchanging some social value between different uh, participants. However, we're experimenting with this issue and the marketplace feature, because at the end, uh, when Internet of Things uh, data streams are going to be multiplied in the next eight years, this, uh, the, the ability to have services like this one, the ability to have a market exchanges like this one is definitely a feature that is going to facilitate additional services in the, in the new era of uh, Internet of Things. Um, there is, of course, who will benefit from trading for what purpose? It's based on the specific use case in the sense that, of course, you can uh, uh, never, um, uh, how to say, uh, forget that the, the way that the business value is created in the trading is something which uh, is between the traders, uh, between those who uh, form the demand and supply. So if there are private data, and as we go to the edge computing, the new era of edge computing, uh, let's say widespread adoption where the computation takes on the edge and the data are generated on the edge and someone would like to have access on those data because it would like to have an additional analysis and provide an additional service on those data. As you can understand there, there are always new ways to, uh, to create these uh, benefits between those who trade and exchange data. Uh, how is this different from what Google is currently doing? Uh, this is uh, always uh, a, a big question. I mean, Google has access uh, indeed to a vast majority of data. And uh, many times, many times this is our data in the sense that it's a, it's a, how to say an example on how, for instance, uh, the data value which for us, it's not always evident how, uh, what this value is. There are companies who can exploit this value and uh, create this uh, additional, um, uh, let's say, the added value that can um, be produced. Um, of course, when we, we create data, then the marketplace is not, uh, uh, let's say, intended to sell to us our own data in the sense that when we create the data, we are the owners of the, of the data. Uh, so even in examples like this one, where we, um, when we uh, feed the data in, in a marketplace like this, uh, there are always mechanisms to um, define that though the creators of the data, those who are going to feed data to the system uh, are of course, free uh, to use them for their own purpose. So different licensing schemes, of course, it's very interesting question. Thank you for that. And um, it's always good to see in a marketplace like the MSEC, how licensing uh, of data users could look like. But it's a, perhaps it's a, within the scope of another uh, future project that we would like to further explore. That was my personal answer. I don't know if uh, Levent or um, Jean, you would like also to to comment on that. Hi. Um, from from my side, it's a uh, my thought is quite simple regarding why does data need to be traded? Um, <clears throat> data the, uh, data they are valuable 
in, in, in any sense. Uh, the people have different interests to different things and the data are of the, uh, one of their interests. And in the, in the current world, for example, we, we pay for variable things, physical things like, like this bottle. This is uh, our university's water with uh, Mark. And this costs 100 yen, yeah? just about a uh, euro. And um, yeah, we, we pay for valuable things. If digital data um, contains value, Logically speaking, someone can pay for that. And um, the amount of physical things is finite, because on the earth, it's finite. However, digital bits, it's infi infinite. They are generated or copy, copied to anyone and very easily. So the amount of digital uh, goods is infinite. Therefore, we can expect huge um, economy, economy if we can um, put digital, real-time digital goods into the market. And the, the marketplace developed by MSEC is the platform for such a um, new economy, I guess. This is my, my thought. Thank you, Jean. Levent, any comment from your side? Mm, I, no, not to add. Actually, I agree that uh, yeah, the, if we see interest um, um, for any anything, so it can be physical or ritual things. So it is naturally the trading part uh, comes into the game, and the marketplaces are here indeed to facilitate those exchanges. And as the marketplace, there needs to be have some rules, some some policy, and some regulations. And I think um, that is certainly the case also for the um, data trading and the work which is being done indeed in this project uh, enables to put those rules and those security and in particular the privacy issues. So um, yeah, that would be my short answer after your your answers in which i agree as thank you okay so thank you so much uh antonis levent jean and george for your extremely interesting uh presentation on the middle layer and thank you so much to harry Gutier for the for the questions so uh very interesting questions indeed and I now open the floor since we also have a couple of minutes uh, until the end of this webinar, open the floor to other uh, questions from other participants or from Harry. Um, you can put them on the chat or you can raise your hand uh, as you prefer uh, to speak directly with us and, and ask any questions or even provide any feedback. So, if you um, are facing similar challenges in your own uh, research, um, or if you just want to provide a comment or ask any specific question like Ari did. So still a couple of, uh, of minutes. So perhaps it was a very clear presentation and there are no further, further questions. Let's just wait a few more seconds to see if anyone has any comments. Uh, I see there is a follow-up on uh, by Harry. Yes, exactly. Anthony, if you care to comment, please be my, be, be my guest. Yes, uh, but um, what was, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what's the, um, not the so clear part, uh, I mean, if you can detail. Uh, 
Ah, uh, of course. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it goes to more political decision uh, discussion. Sorry, uh, in the sense that, uh, of course, uh, if you want to to mention that new confrontation might uh, come up about the data ownership or data manipulation or the data uh, handling. Of course, I would agree with you in the sense that. Um, it's not the resource itself which causes the po political turbulence, but rather uh, the humans and how they perceive the usage of it. So in that sense, um, as also, and as Zin mentioned, the value of data is there and we cannot forget that there are private data. I mean, the data that are being generated by an industry, just to give an example, on their uh, machine processes, on the edge computing and so on. I mean, we don't have access there. However, there could be a way that this industry would like to share the data with someone and sell them, sorry, not share, sell them to someone who perhaps could make any use or any new, um, let's say, uh, invention on top of the data. About medical data, I mean, you see, we have COVID-19 now. So, and there are so much effort and so much effort supported also by the European Commission on, uh, uh, let's say, how we treat data that have to do with those different tests that are being done for a vac uh, vaccine or for any other uh, drugs that can be. They're private data. So we cannot forget that there are private data. Now, if there is a marketplace to, to sell them or not, it's, it's something which definitely, you know, it can be done. So uh, the users out of it and whether it might uh, lead to some circumstances that are, you know, not the appropriate ones, you, you see it's not the data that uh, uh, will cause it. So, uh, ah, sorry, I don't know if anyone else would like to, to comment. Uh, Nadi, you're muted. We, we cannot hear you, Nadi. <laughs> you're muted. Yes, I'm sorry about that. So I was saying that, Harry, please let us know uh, if uh, this answers your, your questions. Nevertheless, if you do not have uh, any questions uh, for, uh, for our, uh, our speakers right now, because you, you need to simulate all the information that has been passed on to you, uh, over this uh, this uh, one hour and a half, uh, you can always send us uh, an email to hello uh, at uh, msecproject.com. Um, so please feel free to reach us out either through our email uh, or by following us on our social media. So on LinkedIn and and Twitter, here you can see our major links. You can also follow our newsletter and you can also join our Slack community. So this is a, a, a new, new community that we have recently created. So every question, uh, every feedback, uh, we do find important your uh, opinion. And so please um, provide it either to our email, our social media, or even to our the Slack community uh, by joining in it. So I don't see any more uh, raised hands. So uh, I perhaps will close the, the Q&A session. So please feel free to reach us out by any of the means that I've told you about. And uh, just a final note that uh, next Wednesday, we will have another webinar. Uh, this one will be focused on the cloud layer of the MSEC solution. Uh, so this, this is part of a set of webinars that we will have until the end of this uh, year uh, on the MSEC architecture, the MSEC solution. So the first one uh, was on, um, was on a, a specific layer, the IoT layer of the MSEC solution. This one was focused on the middleware layer. And the next one will be at uh, 9 a.m. set 
uh, also through Zoom, and you will receive a, a follow-up email uh, still today uh, with the presentation, the video recording, also to join our Slack community, but also to join us next Wednesday uh, for a dedicated session on the cloud layer. So thank you so much to our speakers, Anthony Slevent, George and Jean. Uh, I don't know if you have any final words. Um, I would like to thank you all uh, for attending this event. We keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and wishing you all the best of day. Thank you so much and see you next Wednesday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.